Hey guys, welcome to the channel, as you see in the thumbnail what if, is say hate Rias and time travel. Before I start, please do support for more awesome content, and subscribe my channel and like this video. Go support and follow the JUNEJULY305 for writing that awesome fanfic, and also make sure to comment on this story, link in the description. Let's start this video. Hello my name is Issei. My last name doesn't matter anymore. It's been less than a year since I became a devil, but the whole world is empty. It's been six months Trahiksa returned to this world as Rizavam was successful at breaking its seal. Trahiksa killed everyone who wasn't a dragon. Vali was slaughtered after trying to fight that monster. I miss him, as he was my rival, but was also like my best friend. It was like Natsu and Grey's relationship from Fairly Flail, and an I'm that still hasn't been finished because well everyone is dead. So what have I been doing the last six months since I had everything taken away from me? I have been looking into how to go back in time. I spent the first month in hell trying to find the spell in the Grigori and in the main family libraries. I looked in all of the major libraries as I was desperate at the time as my lovers got killed and my best friends died in front of my eyes. After I realized that this was my chance to do something right I went searching in heaven too. That was what I was doing for the half of the second month. As I was at the end Drake finally woke up and I had told him what had happened. For the second half I spent time in the sacred gear room that God created. There we found our answer. God had created a spell that would allow one to return back in time with his current body. Meaning I would return with me and Drake together with our memories since Drake and me were connected. But in order to use such a spell I would need to get stronger. Well I was in Hades and came to the river Styx. I spent the last three months and crafted a total of 18 rings. Each ring had its own color stone-like gem. Of them had a different name on it. Once I was finished I headed back up to heaven to go back in time. That leads me to now. I am in God's office where he left the spell portal to go back in time. The only question is when. Back to when I was a kid so I could get even stronger, or during the fight against Riser and win that match, or go to when Diodora kidnapped Asia, or I could go back to the night I made love with Rias. Remembering all of these memories made me remember why God made such a spell. It was to save others. After all of this time I knew one moment which I wanted to fix more than ever. Though spell lost ages I said as I activated the portal after getting into my dragon god heavenly dragon 4 mode. I had a mission to do and that is to save lives and I will get everyone through it this time. I will win this time I said as I go through the portal. Scene break in what was the past which is now the present. I won't let you get away you bitch. I said at the fleeing Rainer. This is for Asia. I punched Rainer in the face sending her through the window. That felt good. I said stumbling down as Kiba caught me. Look at you handling that on your own Kiba was saying as I fainted. A light surrounded my body. As I woke up personality wise, I transformed my body to body from the future. I guess I brought my body back too. I am also wearing some of my rings. I saw Kiba right next to me. I then hugged him. Man was I glad to see him again, although I do miss the she version. Kiba is this really you? I whisper into his ear. Kiba was surprised by this. After all, my body did grow a lot in comparison to what it was at this time, and not to mention I ask him if it is really him, because it has been a while since I saw Kiba as a guy. Yes I say, it is me why do you ask? Kiba asked in confusion. I then hug him tightly knowing that I saw him get killed. Nothing Kiba it's just good to see you again. I said speaking of the future. I mean it has been 6 months since I saw them all get killed. I pulled myself together to reenact what needed to be done. What took you so long? I asked Kiba repeating the words from my past. Rias orders sorry. Kiba said as Rias came out of the shadows. But seriously? I once again said my past knowing that this isn't the time to change the past. Seriously? Rias said. I believe in you. Once my business was finished. I went to the basement and found Kaneko and Kiba in free for all with some fallen angel followers. I don't know if we wouldn't have gotten out without you. Kiba said as Kaneko opened the giant doors of the church. Did someone order this? Kaneko says while carrying Rainer. You must be Rainer, lovely entrance. Rhea says before declaring her status as the next head. Remory, you have got to be kidding me Rainer says with fright. It's wonderful to meet you, what a shame we don't have time to chat. But sadly it's time for you to join your friends. Rhea says with a ball of destruction in her hands, throwing it slowly at Rainer. Luckily I move faster than it. I deflect it to the wall while knocking out Rainer. I say why did you do that? Rhea says to me with anger evident in her voice. She was the one who killed you in Asia. Why did you save her? I plan on making her bend to my domination. I say as I pull out the boosted gear. I am the red dragon of domination and the wielder of drag. I will make her submit to me if I have to. As I say that I begin to release some of my aura that I gained in my training. I have seen that she is being used by someone. I also believe she will be useful in the in a little fight with a certain fire user. I say seeing Rhea's confused face as she wonders how I knew of Riser. 
She realizes that I am right that having a fallen under their custody would help her out. Make sure to let your brother and Grafia about your new prisoner. Can you go revive Asia and return these to her I say as I hand the twilight healing rings to Rias, as I set up Rainer's body back to the chairs in the church. Rias preforms the ceremony and Asia and I have the same conversation as we did in the past. I then take Rainer to a nearby hotel after calling my parents telling them I was staying at a friend's house. Ugh what happened to me? Rainer said looking around the room meeting my eyes filled with glee as I was happy she was alive. Why did you save me after I tried to kill you and then kill Asia? She asked me as if she regained her sanity. I saved you for a few reasons. One is that I need you and I know that you were under Kakabiel's mind control. Two I that I love you. And three I believe that you are the key to helping me save the future. And four it will help you if you live. I said as I lied down beside her on the bed. She turns to me. What do you mean I was under mind control and what do you mean about the future? Rainer asked curiously. The Kabiel is prepping up to start a war. Do you really think Azazel would be happy if you killed one of the users of the Red Dragon Emperor after searching for it for so long? I say to her knowing Azazel wouldn't mind if I spoke about him. No I guess you are right. That makes sense but what about my other question? Rainer asked me. Take this easy and try to not act surprised when I say this. I stopped to see her nod her head. I come from a terrible future which Trahixa has killed all but dragons. I had to see my friends and lovers get killed right in front of me. I say crying a little remembering the horror of that day. My whole body shivers as I remember that day. Rainer gently hugs me and puts her head on my chest, as if to assure me that things will be alright. I spent two months looking for the spell to go back. I looked all over hell then went to heaven when I found my answer in God's chamber. But I needed to be stronger to use it. So I spent a month just on training. Back then I didn't have anything else to do so I trained my body for 12 hours a day, while the other 12 were devoted to going to training with Drake as we fraud in the boosted gear. I came back to this time to save you because you were killed in my original timeline, it looks like I used God's device to save a life already. I said with a smile on my face. Rest now I say. You have school in the morning. Rainer says to me in a comforting way as I was drifting to sleep. I love you Rainer I say before falling asleep. I love you too my savoir. I hear as I head off to my dream state to go speak with Drake. Drake do you remember the future? I ask a big red dragon that is with me in the white room. Yes I do I say. Luckily our plan worked. Your body transformed to what we did during that month of training, and you have those rings. Drake said back to me. I am still amazed that it worked. We saved Rainer and conquered her heart. I tell Drake happily. Yes, but now you have to deal with Akeno and her hatred for the fallen. Drake said. Oh shit I didn't think of that. I will take care of her and Riser because he should be here tomorrow. I remember his familiar outside of the occult research club room, so I will lure him there tomorrow and beat him in a fight. Now I say don't get too overconfident in your powers now, Drake said smiling knowing I will win. But Drake I am technically the son of office and great red. A simple phoenix is nothing to me. Especially one who overuses his powers like how he does. Plus I am technically your younger brother since you also contributed to my new DNA. So once again how can a mere bird triumph against me the son of the two dragon gods and the brother of Drake? I say confidently knowing that I am stroking Drake's big ego. Also with our new power, we won't have to be the op eye dragon. We will be feared by our enemies as the greatest Sekiruite that ever existed. I say reminding him of our curse that has been broken by going back in time. Drake starts to tear up as he realized that those two words didn't cause him to have any problems anymore. I say. I expect it would be easy for you to do, but do me a favor and make it go from a fight to a slaughter. Drake tells me as I smiled. I already had that in mind, I said I must go Drake, contact me whenever you want. After all, we will be with each other longer than what I will be with the girls. I mean you already have a year ahead of them. Scene change. I wake up to a cute Rainer, whom I think I will call Ray from now on. I have to go back to the club room to piss off a phoenix and help a Keno out. As I walked out of the room, I whispered into Ray's ear I love you, my light Ray. Then I head off to the club room. As I get there I approach how I did in the past, trying to keep as close to the timeline as possible. Yo, it's your favorite servant. I say as I see Ria smiling while drinking her tea. I say, I am surprised you are here today. Ria said. So why did you save that fallen? I could tell that look in your eye you had a different reason other than love. See that bird in the window? Let's piss it off and then I will tell you everything. I whisper into her ear while pointing to the bird. Okay fine but I better enjoy this. She said knowing it was Riser's familiar and the power she felt off his say was stronger. I then pull her in for a hot makeout session. Boy I haven't had one of these in months. All of a sudden Riser came out of a magic circle nearby pissed off. Who dares take what is Riser's? He says still talking in the third person. I say to him I do. I have rightfully claimed what was mine already as seen by my dragon mark on her neck. 
I say as I try to fool him with some of Natsu's mating rituals from Fairly Flare hoping to fool Riser. She isn't someone to tool to fool around with, but I will do you a favor. We wager in a fight me versus you. Winner gets Ria's. I say out loud. Don't worry Ria's this is all a part of what I have to tell you. I tell Ria's over telepathy. Hein, just be quick and as payment for this after you are done, give me another one of those hot s after. Ria's said over telepathy. You know I will I said as Grafia came in and teleported us to the arena that Surzichas put me and Razor in my old time. I'm to show off some of my true strength I say entering into scale mail immediately. Then entering into my Trinina, go Welsh Dracona Crook. I say as my armor changed for strength and protection. Luckily, I am still faster than him. I shall teach you not to mess with your betters. He screams at me while punching my armor. His hand broke upon punching my armor without me punching him. How is it that such a low devil could have such strength? He asked while nursing his hand. Simple, once I learned that she had such filth as a fiancé I knew that I needed to sacrifice something important to beat you. So I gave up my humanity. I said mostly lying but the truth was that in order to come back from Samuel's curse, I got the body from Red and Office, so I could rejoin Ria's, and I don't feel like explaining that right now. So technically it's the truth. You realize now there is no going back right? Riser says realizing he can't win. I will do anything to protect those I love and care about, and right now you are a threat to my Ria's. So I shall end you now I say after punching him in the chest as he faints. Ravel shows up and tries to stop me from hurting him further. I like her after all she was in my harem and she was a great manager. Ravel, I don't want to hurt you. If you ever feel lonely you can come to me. I know you. I have a secret that will you to assure you that you were one of my lovers. As a kid you used to fear your flames, and that is why you are as his peerage because you needed to get used to your flames. At first you had major seizures about it. Then it started coming easier for you. I tell her one of her stories of the past so I can get her on my side. How do you know this? She says a bit scared. Because you, yourself told me. I say as I whisper into her ear. I am from the future and I have come to the past to fix the time stream, so I don't have to see you or my other lovers die in front of me again. I say as I begin to cry as the images of their bodies comes back to me. I then feel her hug around me. She looked into my eyes as she sees what I remember. Okay, I believe you. When do you want me to join your side again? Ravel whispers into my ear. Rejoin me at the peace conference between the three factions. I will make sure that you will be safe then and there. I whisper back as I leave to rejoin Ria's. So care to explain now? Ria says probably ticked off that I was whispering into Ravel's ear. Okay but you can't tell anyone. I say getting a confirming nod from Ria's. I am from a bad future where I saw you and my other lovers killed. Well I saw everyone killed. I came back in time to save Raynor so that we can have a better chance at fighting it. I said not giving her the complete story. I will help with your peerage as they were all my mates. So even Kibble was one of your mates. Ria said while giggling. It was when the gender change gun was invented by a friend of mine. I need you to just trust me Ria's. We will need to keep Ria's secret until a certain point in time in order to make a better future. Okay. I asked Ria's. Her response was a tongue in my mouth confirming it was a yes. The door chooses then to open with Kiba, Kaneko, and Akeno on the other side. RR is the president making moves on Issei just because of last night? Akeno asked. No, it was a simple thank you for helping me break my engagement with Riser. Ria said proudly that her pawn was able to beat him. I want to be your lover still Issei, just try not to get too many girls okay. Ria's tells me over telepathy. It was you, Akeno, Kaneko, female Kiba, Roswius, Office, Asia, Zenovia, Ravel, Serafal, Kuroka, and Tiamat. But then again I only come from a future where I was with you guys for 9 months. I tell her trying to remember all of the names. I added Tiamat because I need to convince her to join me when we go to get familiars. But grief boy you really get the ladies. I will accept it as long as you love me. Ria's sad. Of course I will. I proved that by beating up Riser up earlier than what was predicted. I tell Ria's as I cut off the communication so we can join in Asia's welcome party. As we do so, I am reminded that I didn't get one, but then again I ended up with all of the love I need. I thought to myself with a smile on my face as I remember my old past. Pineco looks at me and calls me a pervert like she used to. Well with my recent change, I am only going to be a pervert in the bedroom, my little kitten I said it in a whisper the last part into Kaneko's ear. As she heard me call her my little kitten she blushed and also wide-eyed at me knowing what she was. We will talk after school. I said to her. I am going to go to class now. See you all later. I said as I leave out the door. Scene break, it is after school. Today was a big fiasco because I told my two good friends, who I know will betray me, that I am not going peeking anymore, because I had a girlfriend who helped me straighten my life out, and that she will be transferring in before the next term to be with me. 
Of course I was speaking of Ray, but they don't need to know that. But everyone freaked out that the perverted beast was no longer peeping. When they asked me what happened I simply told them when you get to be perverted with the one you love you tend to stop bring perverted outside of the bedroom to save those moments for the one you love. At that the girl was really freaked out that I said something deep and meaningful. I am meeting with Akeno first because of last night. I see her in the hall. Akeno will you join me on the roof? I ask her getting a nod from her. We climb up the stairs and as we both sat on the picnic table. I start on the touchiest subject of all of the girls. Akeno I know what you are and I know how it happened. I start off. How do you know what I have been through? Akeno says angrily which is understandable from her view well from mine, I have known her for months. Keep this a secret. I am from the future and trust me it is not pretty. I tell her. As for your past you confided it to me because I was and still are up till I saw you get murdered, I started tearing up once again visualizing Akeno's death. The blood, feathers and the flesh all came to my mind. I didn't notice it, but she saw it too from looking into my eyes. I was only spared because of what I was Akeno. So I came back to the past to make sure you don't die on me ever again. I don't know what I would do if I saw it again. I say as I weep into her shoulder. Here I was trying to comfort her, but now she is doing it for me instead. SHH, it's alright to say. I can tell by the way you spoke was the truth. Your eyes showed me that scene that you had. So, I'm going to put my trust and love into you. I heard what you said to Ria's before and after Riser came, I just was scared to come out to tell you. I am willing to share you as long as you give me some love. And as for that fallen, it will take a while to get used to her. Akeno said to me. I break the hug to caress her cheek. Thus take it one step at a time love, just accept what you are, and we will take it step by step. I said then at her, and we enjoyed a makeout session as we explored each other's mouths. I do have something for you to make my story more believable. I said pulling off one of my rings. It was a topaz stone with the name Shuri on it. Is this what I think this is? Akeno asked holding the stone while tearing up. Yep, within that rock is the soul of your mom, Akeno. When I was coming back in time, I thought I would get this for you. There might be a chance to get her back to the world of the living. I tell her. Azizel might be willing to help us since he owes us in a way. Thank you Issei. Akeno said crying while looking at the ring and holding it close to her. I need to go speak to Kaneko now. She needs to know the truth about her sister. I said. I found Kaneko while walking to the candy shop. Kaneko, can you come with me to the park? I ask her simply. She nods in response. As we walk to the park, we walk in silence. We sat down underneath a tree. Kaneko how much of your sister's previous master do you know about? I start up as kids around us are giggling and playing games. Some kids were playing tag while the others played with a frisbee. We sat there in quietness, well that is until a frisbee hits me in the face catching me off guard. I don't know anything. Kaneko said sadly. Well here is a shocker, he was using you and your sister as test subjects. The other devils wouldn't admit that he was testing on her and declared her as a stray devil. She killed him because you were reacting badly and your sister wouldn't have it. So she killed him. I wanted you to know the truth that she didn't just go berserk she did it out of her kindness for you. I say glad I am avoiding telling her that I am from the future. There will come a day where someone will realize why she did that and take away her label as a stray devil. How do you know this senpai? Kaneko asks me. I face palm myself. I then tell her that I was from the future, I once again begun to cry again as I visualized Kaneko's body this time. She looked into my eyes and saw her own dead body. She like the other two accepts me and accepts the fact that I am a dragon and cannot be tamed by more than one person. Should I tell Asia next about being from the future? I ask Kaneko as she nods. It wouldn't be fair to Asia senpai if you didn't tell her too. Then what the hell do I tell Kiba? I said with a hint of distress. Tell him that he transforms into a girl and that we have in the nurse's office. No thank you that is one thing I don't want to tell him about. Kaneko giggled at my reaction. Tell him after you help him with his problem. Kaneko said while well, probably thinking how seductive I must be if I can get a boy to change genders. But his problem won't happen for another month. I complained as she gave me one of those stares to your soul. Okay then just wait. Unless you can't wait for him to be your lover again ASA. Kaneko said with a teasing in her voice. Who knew that the perverted beast would bat for both teams? I am only a perverted beast in the bedroom. I thought I made that clear to everyone. I said while putting my face into my hands. I feel Kaneko cuddling to me with her cat ears out. She looked so cute that I feel asleep next to her. Scene skip. Once I woke up, I went to check on Ray. As I went up to see her she seems to have not left the room. Hey, Ray what's up? I ask her. Oh say, it's you. I was wondering if I can move in with you. I can't stand it. Ray said. I will have to speak to Asia and Ria's about it. Both of them are moving into my house right now so I will need to speak with them. You would have to share my bed with me is that cool? Yeah, why wouldn't I? 
Ray said. I just hope I don't have to see your dead body too. I whispered in her ear as I hold her in my arms. I will see about you being transferred into the school. But when Kakabiel shows up I want you to hide here in this hotel. Okay. I will bring you your homework every day. And keep the Kakabiel coming to yourself. She nods. I then her as I leave to go home to where Ria's and Asia are were. As I expected that you two moved in. Asia I need to speak to you for a second. I say aloud. Sure say, let's head to your room. Asia said with a smile on her face. We walk up my stairs as I about to tell the last girl for now. I still have to tell Kiba and Gasper who I will try to see tomorrow over the internet. I don't want to imagine the Kiba conversation. As we walked into my room, Asia sat down at the desk as I sat on the bed. Asia, I saved Rainer for a reason, once again I was starting on a bad note, but it seems like she doesn't care. She will be living here so I can keep her in line. I say I am happy for what she did. Otherwise I couldn't be with you for the rest of my life. Asia said causing me to tear up about the future. Asia that might not be too long away. I tell her hinting at the future. What do you mean to say? Asia asked me. Asia after I punched Rainer, I came back from the future. I said starting to really hate this talk repeating similar lines and having bad memories come back. I should ask Drag if he can seal that away. The future was terrible. I saw all of my lovers slaughtered in front of my eyes you were one of them. I came back to the past to save us all. The first step was to save her. She will cause a big difference in our life. I said remembering Asia's cold dead body I start crying. I am scared. I guess seeing the dead bodies of your lovers will do that to you. Asia I will protect you all this time. I say as I hug her tightly. It's okay say. I noticed you said lovers. I want you to know that I am fine with that. As long as I get some love I would be fine. Asia said with a smile on her face. Thanks Asia, I gotta talk to my parents quickly while I am doing that can you ask Rias if she can talk Sona about getting Ray transferred as a new student? I ask Asia. Yes I will say. Asia answered as she left for Rhea's room. I leave my room to go to the living room where my parents are. Mom, Dad, I was wondering if my girlfriend could move in with me in my room? I ask them. Their faces turn to pure shock to happiness. I have always wanted a grandchild. I almost given hope on him finding a girl. My dad said. I take that as a yes I say turning to see them shake their heads. I decided that this is the time to get some help. Mom, Dad I come from the future. I have seen all of my lovers being killed in front of me, and now I am traumatized. During that massacre you two were also killed. I am not a human I am a dragon. I wanted you to know in case I die that you can be proud of me even if I die mysteriously. What happened next felt like a moment from a picture book. My parents hugged me. They haven't hugged me in years. And those six months of panic made time go slower mentally. They say we are sorry we made you feel so guilty. We realize that we never got the chance to say how proud we are of you to take the abuse you do. My mom said as my dad followed up, we really shouldn't have treated you as an outcast with your ways. Maybe if we did maybe you might be different. We used to think that your only accomplishment you might get was having a child. But now we see that you have exceeded those goals and it's not every day someone gets to be told that their son is a dragon. No matter what I say we love you no matter what happens. I break down even worse. Thanks mom and dad. Now I say head up to your room you need your sleep my mom said. Thanks mom. I said as I went upstairs to ask Rias what Sona's answer was. I see Rias in front of my door. Hey I say good news Rainer can start the day after tomorrow. And Onisama wishes us well. Grafia told him about the fight you and Riser had. He will meet with you next month when he can get the time off. Rias said with a smile on her face. And I sleep with you for tonight I know Ray will be sleeping in your bed with you tomorrow, so I wanted to try it with my future husband. Rias asks with a blush. Sure but let's get through this year before we go husband and wife. Okay. I say as I lie down on my back so Rias could use me as her body pillow like she always did. We just laid there as we fell asleep. Good old memories. We are currently waiting for guests to arrive. Issei took this time to look back at the month that has flown by. It's been a month since Issei crushed Riser. In that time Rainer has come to school and came to live with Issei. After speaking to Issei, Kaneko has begun her training to harness her power. Okeno after speaking to her, seems to be more aggressive, and changed her focus from hating full into working with them to seduce Issei. So far it has worked very well, but Issei don't indulge himself as Issei am saving my first time with Rias. Issei had Rainer go into hiding so no one can detect her would be easier to explain to Kiba, so he didn't have to tell Kiba about that night. Issei was remembering was what happened while he was sitting on the couch while they waited when Issei went back to the familiar forest on his own get a familiar. Flashback, Issei is in the realm of familiars. Issei is currently on what most consider their death march. Issei is went to the gruesome caves to seek assistance from Tiamat about the fight against Trahixa. 
As say walk through the jungle and find myself at a cave with head torches at the entrance. Hello I need to speak to Tiamat, one of the five dragon kings. I come with news. Issei scream into the cave below. I am the current red dragon emperor, and I seek your assistance. Issei met with a feminine dragon face. This dragon had pink purple scales that made her look appealing to Issei dragonwise. Why oh you have one weird scent on you, and I want to know what it is. Tiamat complained. Can you take on your human form? I have something to discuss. Issei tell her. She transforms into a woman with an hourglass figure with a very big butt. Wow you really are gorgeous. Issei exclaimed. Okay so spill what is with you and your aura. Tiamat said blushing at Issei's compliment. I am reborn from the skin of great rat and office. I also gained the true dragon powers of Drag, one of the heavenly dragons. Issei told her not realizing the idea of great rat and office working together is an impossibility in this timeline. Ahahaha you are real funny kid. Those two never got along why you think that I am just going to believe you. Tiamat sneered at Issei. Simple, Trahiksa. Issei told Tiamat making her shiver at the sound of the name. Trahiksa will break free. I came from the future where I didn't spend enough time with my dream and infinite powers, so I couldn't beat him, and I know that was why I was reborn from those office and great red. So why are you here hatchling? Tiamat asked. Simple. I am a devil and I need a partner to be my familiar to help me out with training. Would you be willing to help me out? Issei asked her already thinking of her answer. Silence comes into the room as she considers Issei's offer. Sure. I guess training the next red dragon emperor would have its merits to it, and I need a workout. Issei, I can already tell from your aura that it is a combination of the two big dragons. You have a combination of dark red aura and bright white aura from the two dragons. Your first lesson is how to contain your aura, so your enemies don't know how strong you are. So how long do we have left? Trihiksa said. Less than nine months left I am afraid. We may be able to stop it from being released in the first place, but we have to wait a month till we can start my plan. Does that sound good to you? In return I will give you access to my farm of dragon apples, something I learned from Tynan in my future how to cultivate. You have already convinced me young hatchling. Tiamat says with a smile. Issei then faints and falls into her arm. He likely fainted from the travel here. It takes a lot out of someone to get here from the gate. I let him sleep inside my bedroom. After all he is my partner or should I say mate. Tiamat thought with a devilish smile came to her face. Later that day. Where am I? Issei asked waking up in an unfamiliar room. You're in my room, mate. Said Tiamat as she came into Issei's view. What do you mean by mate? Issei asked thinking that this was moving faster than he predicted. Well we are partners from here on out so I figured that was what you meant. After all I could use a mate as I am approaching that age, I could use a strong mate too. I sort of expected it just not so quickly. Issei said wiping some sweat off his forehead. But geez that escalated quickly. But just so you know you are going to have to wait till I give Ria's my first time again. Fine I can wait a while. Let us seal up our contract then. Tiamat said Ingese on his making the contract complete. Well that was unexpected. I thought there was a paper and pen version. Issei asked. Well when you are a strong like me this is used to make a commitment with us. Since our partnership is finalized from now on call me Tia. Said Tiamat. Alright then it is nice to meet you Tia. Issei said making her blush. Now if you don't mind I have to return to school. My body becoming muscular compared to my past self scared some of the humans at my school. Luckily I came up with a training regimen that was impossible. I mean 1000 push-ups, sit-ups and pull-ups getting this strong of a body in just a weekend. Those to show how gullible humans can be. Issei said laughing as he remembered how his classmates reacted when they saw his future body, one that he would have gotten in another 15 months. Flashback end. Dust as Issei snapped back into reality the door was knocked on. Come in Ria said. Thank you for seeing us today. I am Zenobia. The girl with the blur hair said. And I am Arena. The chestnut said. These are two of the girls Issei mentioned. I better keep an eye on them. Ria's thought. It amuses me that the members of the church wish to speak to a devil. So why? Here is the thing. There are six of the seven pieces of Excalibur. Three are motionless in the church, while three were stolen fallen angles. Arena explained. Issei smiled at this. This time I will mock that that crow before I can destroy him Issei thought. I will tell Azazel to let me have the fun. These are the ones we have. I have Excalibur Destruction and Arena has Mimic. Zenobia followed up. So what would you like for us to do today? Ria's asked. Leave us alone. Our request no. Our order is to not to have any devils intrude in the battle between us and the fallen angels for the Excaliburs. In other words, we came here to tell you not to interfere with this incident. Ria's eyes changed after hearing the way Zenobia talked. Such manner of speech. Is it restraint? Are you thinking that we might collaborate with those fallen angels? Perhaps that we might team up with them to do something with Excalibur. 
Rhea said with a cool tone. The headquarters think that it might not be impossible. Zenobia said. There were chills within Rhea's eyes. She was quite pissed. An enemy comes all the way to her territory. Then tells her not to be involved and not to butt in. Also they said whatever they wanted to by saying that they would not forgive us if we formed an alliance with the fallen angels which forgets includes Raynor. Rhea's pride as a high class devil wouldn't allow her to keep quiet about it. The higher ups don't trust devils and fallen angels. We were ordered as if the holy swords are taken away from God's side, then the devils would also be happy right? The fallen angels would also profit from it. For those reasons it won't be weird for them to form an alliance. That's why we are giving you a warning. If you form an alliance with the fallen angel Kakabiel then we will eliminate you all. Even if you're the little sister of the Mayu, by our boss. Zenobia said it casually without caring about Rhea's glare. If you know that I am the sister of a Mayu, then it means that you have lots of connections with the higher ups in the church. Then I will say it. We will not form an alliance with the fallen angels. Never. In the name of the Gremory House. I will not do something that would tarnish the name of our Mayu. Rhea said firmly absent-mindedly forgetting about Raynor, who she actually got along with very well. It had become a contentious situation for both sides. But Zenobia laughed. Foo. Hearing that is good enough. I had to warn you just in case that Kakabiel is hiding himself in this town along with the three Excaliburs. If something were to happen I would be the one to be hated by the bunch in the church headquarters. Well, we won't ask for cooperation. If you were to form an alliance with God's side temporally, then it would affect the balance of the three factions. Especially if it's the little sister of Amau. After hearing Zenobia, Rhea softened her expression and took a breath. Where is the person the Orthodox Church dispatched? Rhea's asked. Zenobia answered Rhea's question, they have that person put on hold for this case. They are planning to protect the last Excalibur if Irina and I fail. So it's just the two of you? You are going to retrieve the Excaliburs from the leader of the Fallen Angel with just the two of you? How reckless. Are you trying to die? Rhea said it with an amazed voice. But Arena and Zenobia said it with straight eyes, yes. I have the same view as Arena, but if it's possible I don't want to die. They said. You came here to Japan prepared to die. The belief in your teaching is extreme like always. Rhea said. Don't talk ill of our beliefs, Rhea's Gremory. Right, Zenobia. Arena said. Right. Also the church decided that it would be better to eliminate all of the Excaliburs, rather than letting them get used by the Fallen Angels. Our minimum objective is to get the Excaliburs away from the Fallen Angels. To accomplish that, it's okay for us to die. The only way to fight against the Excaliburs are Excaliburs. Zenobia said. Is it possible with only the two of you? Issei asked in the place of Rhea's. Well, we won't die in vain. Zenobia said fearlessly to Issei's question. You seem confident. Do you have a secret weapon? Rhea's asked. Maybe. I will leave it to your imagination. Zenobia said while Issei whispered to Randall. Zenobia was the only one that heard Issei and was shocked from hearing the right words. After that, the two of them just stared at each other, and the conversation stopped. Irina and Zenobia looked at each other and stood up. Then we will take our leave now. Let's go Irina. Zenobia said standing up from the couch. So you won't drink your tea? I can prepare a snack for you. Rhea said. I don't need it. Zenobia declined Rhea's offer with her hand. I'm sorry. See you. Irina also apologized with her hand. They didn't try to accept Rhea's offer, and the two of them tried to leave. Then both of them looked in the same direction. It was Asia. When I saw you in Hyde Issei's house I thought that maybe it was you. Are you the witch Asia Argento? I never expected to meet you in a place like this. Zenobia said. Asia's body shook after she was called witch. That word is something painful to Asia. Irina seemed like she noticed as well and stared at Asia. Issei was starting to get mad. Are you the rumored witch? The former holy maiden. You are said to have the power that can also heal devils and fallen angels, right? I heard that you were sent somewhere after getting exiled, but I never thought you became a devil. Zenobia said with a big question. Ami Asia didn't know how to react to Arena and Zenobia. It's okay. I won't tell the higher ups what I saw here, so rest assured. People who were around the holy maid in Asia will also get shocked as well. Arena said. Asia made a perplexed expression at Arena's words. But to become a devil. The one who was called a holy maiden. You fell to the lowest place you could. Do you still believe in our god? Zenobia said with venom in her voice. Zenobia. There's no way that she, who became a devil, still believes in God. Irina said it with an amazed face. No, I can smell the belief from her. It might be an abstract way of saying it. But I'm sensitive to these things. There are people who betray the teachings and still have guilt within them because they couldn't forget the teachings. I can feel something similar coming from her. Zenobia said it with sharp eyes, and Irina stared at Asia even more with interested eyes. Is that true? Asia, you still believe in God even if you have turned into a devil. 
Asia replied to that question with a sad expression, I just can't put it aside. I believed in it for my whole life. Hearing that, Zenobia took her sword out from the cloth and pointed it at Asia. Is that so? Then you should be cut down by us this instant. If it's now, I can cut you in the name of God. Even if you have sinned, our God will forgive you. Zenobia approached Asia. Issei stood in front of Asia to protect her. Don't touch her. Issei said knowing that this was his chance. Zenobia backed off as far as she could. You have no right to try to judge her like that, or to call her a witch. Issei said with his dragon aura slipping though. Believe me that is nicest descriptions I have for her. Zenobia said. You will regret those words one day. Issei whispered to Zenobia, so only she could hear not the threat, but the sadness in those words instead. I don't want to hear it. You were the ones that forced her into that life, and just because of one mistake you throw her out. Issei that is enough. Rhea said. That is perfect I will take all of you on. Kiba said coming into the room. And who are you? Zenobia asked. Someone who came before you. I was a failure though. Kiba said. They went outside to set up the fight. Kiba summoned up his swords. Finally my object is in sight. The thing I wanted most to destroy appeared in front of my eyes willingly. Kiba said like a crazed manic. They moved outside so, Issei, it's totally you. Said Arena with sparkles in her eyes. Since the fight was started Issei already moved. Issei got in her face and pulled at her nose. Hey Arena I have your nose. Issei said faking that he had her nose knowing how gullible she is. Hey. Give that back. Arena said. Alright but you have to catch me. Issei said playfully leaving at a pace that she could follow. You won't get away. Irina said following after Issei smiling as she was playing with her friend from all those years ago, just like how they would when they were kids. Everyone was stunned. The devils all thought Issei was going to use his dress break on Irina, but he didn't. He didn't even have the boosted gear out and still rushed the girl just to pull her nose. Zenovia was surprised that Irina let herself be taken of guard to follow a devil. Back with Issei. Now it's my turn to say that you can't tag me. Issei said luring Arena to a hill that overlooks the town. Arena was breathing hard when she got to the hill. Why did you leave me here Issei? Arena said throwing away the mincet that she was after her nose. Do you remember we used to play here? I brought you here so I could tell you how I winded up as a devil. It was simply because I am the Red Dragon Emperor. If I joined one side of the three-way war, what would the other factions try to do? Issei said. Arena sat down on the hill and stayed silent. I would be a threat. So one of the sides took it ahead of themselves to kill me. Luckily Rhea saved me and I became a devil like that. That doesn't mean I am your enemy though. For I too own a holy weapon. Issei said shocking Arena. Issei summoned the boosted gear and pulled out Ascalon. This is my sword. It chose me a long time ago. So see I am not against you. Issei said handing her Ascalon so she could verify that it was holy. How did you get this? Arena asked stunned. Let's just say the soul within the blade that chose me. Enough about that. How about I help you not as a devil but as a dragon? Issei asked, sure Issei. Irina said with a smile. I do want to ask if I could get Kiba into this. He will be of help to you if you get him on your side. Especially when he loses to Zenovia. Issei said. Irina looked at him. What we both could tell Kiba is fighting blindly. Plus with that sword Zenovia has in the back, Kiba couldn't make a sword strong enough yet. Issei said. Yet? Irina asked. Yeah yet. I think he has potential, but he is too blind from his anger about being killed for that project. I am pretty sure Michael himself didn't order for those kids to be killed. You can use Kiba's anger to get the swords back and get rid of the blotch that caused that project. Win-win right? Issei said. Irina chuckled at her old friend's convincing words. You really got good with using your words Issei. I just can't win against you. It was about time I won an argument with you. The main reason I brought you here is so I could remember our first dot remember. It might have been an accident, but it till counts, Issei said as Irina blushed. Well let's go back to the school. I have to meet back up with Zenovia. Irina said. I'll come find you after school tomorrow. I have to go meet with someone for work. Issei said. Okay I will see you then. Before you leave come give me a hug. Irina said giving Issei a hug before walking off to the school. I am sorry that you are going to have to do this, Issei said while heading to the pier. Back with Irina. She arrived to see Kiba knocked out on the ground. After hearing what happened to Issei maybe something similar happened to him that he had to give up so he could escape. Now that I think about it Asia might be the same. Irina thought. Irina turned to Asia. I am sorry Asia for my words. Even if you switch teams. You don't deserve that harsh treatment. Irina said to Asia catching everyone off guard. It's fine. Asia said. Where is Issei? Rias asked. Issei reminded me of what we used to hang out together and that he is the same Issei I knew when we were little. Kind and caring. Issei said he got a call from his employer. Irina said. Come on Zenovia let's go. 
she said as she pulled Zenovia out of the area catching her off guard. Issei must have gotten a call from his only regular. Ria said. Kiba already left. He was mad that he couldn't take losing to Zenovia. Be safe Issei. Ria's thought as they headed back to the club room. Back with Issei at the dock. Hey it's just the person I wanted to see. Issei said to his client regular. Oh? And why is that? The man asked. I realized I never got your name. I think it is Azazel if I am correct. Issei said making Azazel fault. How did you figure me out? Azazel asked. I will reveal that later on. I wanted if you could ask the white one to let me take care of the crow that is coming. He can take the body away. Issei asked. That is one weird request. May I ask why? Azazel asked. Well I guess I can let you in. Kakabiel is the one behind this issue. I know he is betraying you so sending the white makes it seem that you are taking care of it. I want you to leave it to me to take him out so Vali can take him into custody. Issei said slipping up that he knew a lot more than what he was letting on. That made Azazel raise an eye. Pine what is your plan then? Azazel asked. Issei then described exactly what he happens to the end. I will knock him out and the white one can pick him up. Sound good. Issei asked dumping a lot of info on the fallen governor. Azazel put his hand though his hair. I got the plan. Are you sure this will help out to my goal? Yes Azazel once this mess is done I got the next step for peace planned out. Issei said pushing his plan through. Alright I will trust you. You seem more knowledgeable than what you appear. Especially knowing the white dragon's name. Azazel said making a safe face palm at his mistake. That's not something I can explain. When we meet up after we rest him, I will let you know. Issei said while heading home to his house. The next day Issei tried to look down to get Kaneko in to help get Saji, and Issei is explaining that they should help the swordswomen with their work. Are you crazy? You are going to get us killed. And you still want to destroy them? Saji said, I mean you have Rhea she is strict but reasonable. I have Sona who is more draconian and just loves punishing us. Issei chuckled at draconian. You do know that you are also a dragon because of your sacred gear. So you just insulted yourself. Issei said upsetting Saji. No way sorry I am out. He got up and started walking away, he was stuck by Kaneko grabbed him from the table behind the bush. Big surprise, I knew you would try to run away. Kaneko said while eating a parfait. Issei and Saji sat down and told of their plan to get Kiba back in the right mindset and to get the church off their yard so to speak. I just want to go home Saji wailed trying to leave only to have Kaneko pull him back down. So you want to work with the church? Kaneko asked. Issei shook his head. They already said they would rather see them destroyed than have them abused didn't they? Issei retorted. Yes they want them back in their hands and they could fix it as long as they take its parts back. Kaneko said. If Kiba wants to get his revenge on Excalibur and the church wants what is theirs back. The goals might differ but we can get them to work together. After all safety is in numbers and I would like to add some to their chance of living. I am not sure they will be as eager as you. Kaneko said. Issei whispered into her ear, trust me my little cat. They will be willing to work with us. Remember what I told you. This was meant to happen. This made Kaneko go wide-eyed. Can I go now since you have your rook? Saji asked wanting nothing to deal with this. Nope we need as much support as we can get. Let's go find them. Issei said leading to the area Issei knew where they would be. Oh blessings of the wandering sheep before us. We are pitiful. Lord please have mercy on us. Two voices said making Kaneko and Saji face palm while Issei lightly laughed. Issei took them to a family restaurant and Zenovia and Arena were already chowing down. When they were full they realized what happened but felt like needing to ask it out loud. Or at least Zenovia did. What just happened? Did we sell ourselves out for food? Zenovia asked holding her head in shame. Even if it is for regaining our strength we sold ourselves to the devil. Wow for a member of the church you really don't take donations well, Issei said thanking Drake internally for telling him to take as much money of his own in return to never go through the op eye dragon stuff again. Lord please bless these devils for their kindness Serena said while praying. Saji and Kaneko took damage, but Issei did not. How does the sound? In return for helping us clean those plates why don't we help you clear your plate of your problem too? Issei asked Zenovia. Fine. Irina already told me of how you want to get that blonde one back on the right course. Zenovia said. Issei called Kiba and set up a meeting at the fountain. It is rather surprising to heat someone who can wield an Excalibur would ask for their destruction. Kiba said. Speaking of disappointing I heard you left the house of Gremory. If you are astray I will slay you if you like. Zenovia asked pulling out destruction. They were at the fountain with a group from the restaurant was facing Kiva who was waiting for them. You are welcome to try if you like Kiva said using sword birth to make a sword. Stop right there we aren't here to fight. Right Zenovia. Issei said stepping out in front of the two. Zenovia shook her head. It is understandable why you hate that project. Having to see your friends die in front of you is a tragic thing. 
The one behind the killings what outlasted from the church. Zenobius said. His name is Bulba Galilei. Every so often he goes Bulba 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 sir. Irina said trying to make a joke to lighten the mood. Sadly only Assay got the joke with a little chuckle. It's Valber, Irina. When he was exiled he likely joined the fallen angels. So it is likely he is probably involved in what is happening here. Zenobia said ignoring Arena's attempt at a joke. Well in return I think it would be best if I give you some information back. The priests that were sent here were being killed was by a man named Fried Zelzen. It is common for exiles to work together. Meet us at the church tonight. And thanks Red Dragon for this I will return the favor. Zenobia said walking away with Arena following behind. So this is good news then right? Issei said putting his hand on Saji's shoulder. Saji screamed, this is not good news. Not only could we have been killed, but we could have started a war with the church. Issei I want you to stay out of this. Kiba said. Kiba told them his story about when he was in the project. Issei walked up to Kiba and pointed his finger at him. Kiba we are family we look out for each other. How can you expect us to let you go just for you to be astray? Right Kaneko. Issei said. Kaneko walked up to Kiba. I would be sad if you just left. She said. Well if you are with this plan so will I Kiba said. I have to go make a call. Issei said walking off from the group as they walked to the church. Yo Azizel. I am calling up to make sure you remember the plan. Issei said over the phone. Tell the white one to go to the school tomorrow night to wait for my signal. I figured I should give you some incentive in this for working with me. Your daughter, Rainer, is alive and is currently hiding at my house and wait for after Kakabia leaves. I had Serzich's sister and Barkel's daughter getting along with her. From the way things are going we will have more support for peace since Serzich's is a cis con. Wait Rainer is alive. Azizel said. I will take her to meet you the night after tomorrow. I have to go now. Issei said as he was approaching the church. Alright Issei I will pass on the message. Take care of my daughter now. Azizel said. I will Issei said before hanging up. So are you here to keep an old man company? Azizel said to the man behind him. Didn't know you were the type to be lonely. The man replied. Well I just found out my daughter is alive. Also I have a message from the red one. He knows about you. He said that he wants to help you on your goal for his goal is the same he says. He said that you should be at the academy in the evening. He said that he will send you a signal when to pick up the crow. Azizel said. Okay I will do it. It will be interesting to see what the weakest user in history can do to our crow. The man said walking away from the pier. Back with Issei. He put on the priest outfit and they spit into the two groups. Oh Issei in return for the food I wanted to let you know the white one is active. Zenobia said before leaving. Let's think where they would be. It is somewhere abandoned. Kiba any ideas? Issei suggested. I think I know where. Kiba said taking Issei's bait. They walked to the abandoned factory. It was the one they fought the stray devil visor. Something is wrong. Issei said. Off the top of the building Freed. Kiba summoned a sword to counter. Freed and Kiba get into a tight sword fight. Issei remember to limit the power you transfer. Too much power he killed the bug too early. Drade said to Issei. I already have that stored for transferring. Which is now. Saji I need you to use your sacred gear on Freed's leg to slow him down. Issei said. Roger that. Line Saji said summoning his sacred gear and having it wrap around Freed's leg. Kaneko throw me a kiba so I can transfer my power to him. Issei said having Kaneko pick him up and threw him. Issei then transferred his power to kiba. Thanks now I will use this power as a gift that I will use gratefully. Sword birth go. Kiba said stabbing his sword into the ground making many swords around Freed. Freed manages to keep the swords from stabbing him. Sword birth huh? A man's voice said. Who goes there? Kiba said for some reason stopping his attack on Freed. A sacred gear that can exhibit invincible power based on the user's ability. Oh Freed looks like your use on swords can use some brushing up. The man said. Oh look, it's old man Valber. Freed said causing Kiba to look at the man with hate. So he is the one Zenovia mentioned. The one behind the project. Kaneko said. Valber Galilei. Kiba said angrily getting the man's attention. The one and only. Valber said snidely. The one and only what old man? Make yourself useful and help me get this lizard's tongue off me. Freed said whacking away at Saji's sacred gear. You need to put all of your energy into the blade of the sword. Valber said making the smile return to Freed's face. Oh is that all? Freed said putting the energy in the sword, making the blade glow with holy power. Freed laughed maniacally slashing at the line that had been holding him back. I see if I figure out how to use the holy elements I can get more powerful than before. Now stay down so you can be food for my sword, Freed said jumping at Issei catching Issei off guard, because it was Kiba who he jumped at. He slashed out at Issei as Issei caught it with his hand, shocking everyone that was there. What? How did you grab my sword like that? Freed said pissed that his sword couldn't hurt the devil. 
He lounged to Kiba only to be met by Zenobia. Hey say we are finally here. Irina said. Irina what are you doing? Saji asked. What, you called us remember? Irina said. Wait when? Saji asked. Good to see that you are paying attention. Kaneko said to Saji. You are both traitors. I condemn your souls in the name of our god. Zenobia shouted pushing back Freed. How dare you say that name in front of me? Freed said. Kiba took the opportunity to attack while Zenobia hit him pinned. Freed dodged it while laughing. You are done for tonight. All you had to do was take out the vermin from the church, yet there they are with holy swords, and we are outnumbered. Let us escape now. Balber said. Oh so soon. See ya. Freed said throwing a smoke grenade, Zenobia and Kiba jumped at them helping to hit them, but didn't. Let's go arena. Zenobia said with Kiba behind her. Guys let's wait for our masters here. They should be here in 3 2 1. Issei said. Goodness what have you gotten yourselves into? Came a voice from behind them. It was the two kings of the area with their queens. I have information that is very valuable to you. In exchange for this info I ask that we be free of spanking for disobedience, since that was what we would have been punished for. Issei said not wanting to get spanked like that again. It was fine for him if it was their hands, but with magic it was usually without pleasure. Fine. What info do you have? Sona said wanting the information so she could plan ahead. The ones behind this incident are not a part of the main fallen group. They were betraying as as a land is the reason Raynor is hiding right now. Issei said. How accurate is your information? Sona said wondering who the correspondent was. It was Azazel himself. We are drinking bud so to say. It is a benefit of being the Red Dragon Emperor. Issei said. All we can do now is wait for them. Alright let us all spit and meet after school tomorrow. Sona said taking her family home with her. Let us go home Riaz. Issei said taking her by the arm. Yes let's all go home. Riaz said. Back at Issei's house he was greeted by a pleasant sight. It was Asia in a naked apron. Welcome home you guys. Asia said. Issei wanting to skip the story again decided it was time for a test run. Riaz why don't you go ask my mom if she has one for you? Issei asked. The light. Mom I want to wear what Asia is wearing. Ria said heading back to where Issei's mom was. Asia I need to test something. Issei said pulling a bright yellow jean ring with the name Asia on it. Put this on and hold onto my hands. Issei said putting the ring on her left hand ring ringer. Okay Asia. Soul fusion. Issei said. The glow surrounded the two of them. Issei it's you. Asia said. Asia you know have the memories of our future self. Excluding your death of course. Trust me you will be safe this time. Issei said holding her gently we are going to repeat everything till the three factions meeting. The only change I am making is saving Raynor and defeating Kakabiel myself, instead of having Vali do it okay. Alright Issei I will try to. One question though, what about Kiba? Will you do it in the nurse's office again? Asia said teasing Issei. Where did the innocent Asia go who didn't know what a condom was? Issei said making Asia blush of her ignorance. Remember you are the first one to be awakened from the future the others might know I am from the future, but don't have theirs yet. Keep it a secret and act normal. Issei said. Okay Issei, I am just glad I was first. Asia said with a smile. Well you are the most reliable one, and I don't want Diodora touching you again. Drake has a plan on how to counter that when we get there. Issei said. He may be the reason I am here, but he has caused so much pain. Asia said. Riaz came out of a room to show Issei her naked apron, so how does it look? Riaz asked. Issei put his hand up. It looks great on you. Issei said putting his thumb up. Thanks well Asia, let's make some dinner. Riaz said. Yes let's. Asia said. The next day. Issei was laying his head on his desk. Looks like we got a snoozer looser situation over here. Eh hey bro? Mitsuda said. Ugh you don't need to be that close to me. Issei said. So are you worried about whose titties are better? Riaz or Akeno? Akeno or Riaz who is it going to be? The two said together. No I don't need help with that. I found that it's better to like what's beyond her chest. After all who wants to be with someone who is nothing but trash on the inside. Issei said shocking the class except Asia who giggled at what he said. After school they meet up with Riaz. Good news my familiar found someone. Let us teleport there now. Riaz said. They then teleported to a forest path. There was a woman with wings with a girl with chestnut hair. Irina. Asia come over here and help me heal her. Issei said rushing to her side. Alright Issei. Asia said starting the healing process with Issei giving her some extra energy. Where are Kiba and Zenobia? Issei asked. They got away, I wasn't fast enough, I let them down. Irina said please stay safe Issei. She said putting her hand on his cheek before passing out. A blue light came from behind them. It was Sona, Saji, and Tsubaki. Thank you so much for coming Sona. Ria said. Of course, I came right after I received your message. The damage looks pretty bad. Sona said taking notice of Irina's state. Yes. 
Twilight healing cannot heal consumed stamina. Asia said. I have the equipment to treat her at my house, Tsubaki. Right Tsubaki said to her master, I will leave her with you. She picked up Arena leaving via magic circle. So what happened? Saji asked. I don't know but can I ask you to come out here freed? Issei asked making everyone flinch. Why I thought I was doing a good job masking myself. Well 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 if it isn't that we all took the bait club. So many damn devils. Freed said Asia Argento the traitor nun who sold her soul to the devil. How much do you like your new life as devil scum? Asia didn't flinch. I am happy. Asia said making Freed sad at her lack of reaction. Riaz and Sona both jumped in front of the group. Whoa whoa whoa. Don't blast the messenger. Someone wants to talk to you Red. Freed said. Which someone? Riaz responded. By my boss. Freed said having the ten wing fallen angel appeared. It is a pleasure to meet you daughter of the house of Gremory. I am Kakabiel. The fallen said. The pleasure is all mine. Please call me Riaz. So you are the leader of the dark angels. Riaz asked, it's nice to put a face to a name. Your crimson hair is quite breathtaking it is as breathtaking as the Scarlet Devil King. Even the facial expressions are similar. That is absolutely nauseating. Kakabiel said. Thank you. Is there something you wish to discuss with me or are you here to review my appearance? Riaz asked. I am thinking about doing some damage to this intuition and the residents of this town. Kakabiel said. Why would you want to harm our school? I figure if I do Serzich's will come to help his little sister. What do you think? Kakabiel said. You will be starting the war between God, fallen angels, and the devils alike. Riaz said. Better than what I got after stealing the Excaliburs, I though for certain Michael will come, but all he sent was a weak exorcist and two pathetic holy swordswomen. Honestly it was disappointing. So wait that is your goal. You only want to start a war. Riaz said. Yes. Until next time Tutaloo. He said throwing a light spear at them. Issei jumped in front of everyone and said draconic shield. Causing a thick protection to come upon them to shield them from the light. He is off to the school. Kaneko said pointing to the school. Let's go. Said Issei leading the way to the fight. With Issei. He is running at a moderate speed. He had to be late to the fight to make sure Vali and Azazel were in place to get the crow. By the time he got there Sona already placed the shield around the school. Issei, make sure everyone comes back alive. Sona said. Issei runs to join the battle saying to her. Don't worry. No one is allowed to die tonight. Issei said. At the time Issei rejoined the battle Kiba's friends were surrounding him. Why did I live? There were kids who had bigger dreams than I did so why? Someone better than me should have made it out of that nightmare. Kiba said. Kiba looked around him and saw the souls of the children of the project. The littlest one grabbed Kiba's shirt and showed him a smile. They then started to circle around Kiba, no longer holding a human form. It's okay. Let's all gather together. Take us in. It is time. You don't have to be scared, even if there is no god our hearts will be forever one came the voices around Kiba. Kiba accepted them and making all of the devils smile. Seems like I came at a good time. Looks like Kiba has finally got his balance breaker. Issei said from behind Riaz and Akeno scaring them both. Issei, when did you get here? Riaz asked. Right now actually I had to make sure my plan is in step before I got here. Issei said looking at Kiba who was talking to Valber. Freed come here. Valber called summoning Freed. You should have died with the rest of the subjects. Kiba don't let your friend's house go to waste. Issei said. Gross. Another moving scene from the Gagmi Gremory. Now my skin is starting to crawl. I can't take it. I need to kill you, and that should make me feel much better. Freed said energizing his sword. Time for a new sword. I will create a sword for Riaz and all of my friends. Sword birth go. Kiba said pointing his sword up in the air as holy and demonic powers circle around it. This is my sword of betrayer fused with devil and holy powers. Just try to stop it. Holy and devil together? Riaz asked. Yep Kiba had peaked making this his balance breaker. Issei said as Kiba and Zenobia head to Freed. Talk to me Knight of Gremory, are we still allied? Zenobia asked getting a yes from Kiba. She then stabbed destruction into the ground. O oh Peter, O oh Feliphus, O oh Dionysus, and the Blessed Virgin Mary. I ask you to hear my prayers. Zenobia said as a blade started coming out of a magic circle. In the name of the saint living and blade. I hereby set you free, Durandal. A sword on par with Excalibur. Said to cut everything in this world. Akeno said timidly. That is impossible my research didn't go into users of that blade. Valber said. Well unlike those two I am all natural. Zenobia said with a winning smile. This kiddo cuts everything he touches, but he doesn't always listen to me. So we keep him in a different dimension. Zenobia explained. I don't believe you. Freed said running at her blindly. Freed was attacking with so much malicious intent that even though his speed was fast and his blade was invisible, he was easy to follow. All you have there is a broken holy sword. It is no match for my Durandal. 
Zenobia said parrying the attacks. My ass. Freed said jumping to dodge her attack. I don't like you. Well the feeling is mutual. Kiba said attacking Freed. After a few swipes Kiba broke the Excalibur and hit Freed hard enough to knock him out. Yes. Did you see how our powers overcame it? Kiba said to his friends. How is this possible unless both the Devil King and God both are dead? Balber said before getting a light spear into his chest consuming him. Well that was easy. I guess the secret is out the God of the Bible is dead. So how does it feel Swords Woman to know your master isn't here anymore? Kakabiel said making Zenobia fall. Issei stepped up to fight. Looks like you said something you shouldn't have. Issei said making everyone look at him. Issei did you know? Rhea said as Issei didn't respond. I have the order from Azazel to ask you to stand down or I will make you. Issei said with full confidence pulling out the scroll that he had Azazel sign. Bring it on little devil. Kakabiel said. You shouldn't have said that. Issei said putting his hand in the air. Oh my sword from the future come to the past for it is time to make things last. We will be just, pride, and true. But now it is time to say hello to this world, so come through. Hum my blade. Neo Durandal. Issei said pulling out the Durandal that was infused with all of the pieces of Excalibur. It is time for an illusion Issei said making clones of himself. Let my blade go invisible and fast. Issei said showing of the traits that were added to Durandal. Issei now was circling Kakabiel in the air flying with his dragon wings, since that is what he is used to while his clone surrounded Kakabiel. He preferred scales over feathers because it was more durable, plus he liked the red coloring over the black or gold choices he had. I have had enough of this. Kakabiel said making several light spears surround him. Die. He said chucking the spears at Issei, but it hit the clones. Issei went on the attack slashing at every part of Kakabiel and breaking his wings, causing him to fall. Go destruction beam. Issei said calling on Excalibur destruction from the ground to hit Kakabiel and send the signal to Vali. A man in white armor came in less than three seconds. I will take this one off your hands and I have a few questions for that priest. The man said. As he passed Issei, Drake spoke up. Yo Albion. How are you? I am well. Why are you asking rival? Well I was thinking this might be the time we get along. The previous hosts have already left the sacred gear. What do you say? Put aside our differences and come together so our hosts don't get killed. Because I don't know about you, but I honestly like my host. That and explaining everything to a new host is getting stale. Oh thanks Drag. That is the nicest thing you have said to me. Issei thought. I will consider it. Considering how strong your current host is just from his big jump and strength that might be the cause. Anyways let's go Vali. Vali was quite stunned when he felt a bit of Issei's current power level. He came by to check out his rival and found him to be really weak. Maybe I can unlock a new power too. Vali thought as he left with the two prisoners in his arms. Issei quickly put away Neo Durandal and just praying that no one would ask. Luckily they didn't. They were still stunned at the fact that God was dead, well, except for Asia who had her memories of her future self. Hello is anyone there? Issei said waving his hand in front of Rias. Oh Issei where is Kakabiel and Freed? Rias said only just noticing the absence of two people. Oh them. I asked Azazel to send someone to fetch them to put them under arrest. Anyways we won. Issei said trying to make everyone into a good mood. It worked. Well I don't know how you did it Issei, but it is good to see you did it. Also Kiba you managed to achieve balance breaker. Rhea said. I betrayed the club members and most importantly I betrayed the person who saved me a long time ago. I can't make up for what I have done. Kiba said. You came back and that is all that really matters. Next time don't let everyone's feelings go to waste. Rhea said. President I make my vow to you once more. I, Kiba Yudo promise to protect you and your companions as a knight in the house of Grimory for the rest of my life. Kiba said as Rias walked to him. She put his head into her bosom. Thank you and welcome home. Rias said. Issei decided he wouldn't get jealous of where Kiba was. It's time to receive your punishment, 1000 spankings. Rhea said with a smile on her face. What? Issei can you help me? Kiba begged. No can do pretty boy, I have to go talk to Raynor to let her know it is safe. Issei said walking over to Zenovia as everyone else was watching Kiba get spanked. Yo Zenovia. What's up? Issei asked. How long did you know? Zenovia asked. I know how I can make things easier. Comes it free of charge with some minor pain. Take this ring and hold my hands Issei said offering her a ring that was blue labeled Zenovia. Up for the challenge wielder of Durandal. Issei said intimidating her while putting out his hands. She took the ring and put it on her left ring finger and took both of his hands and they made an oval with their arms. Ready? Soul fusion. Issei said and a bang of light struck them. Issei is that you? Zenovia asked with tears in her eyes. Yes but we just defeated Kakabiel. You probably don't remember but you all were killed and I went back in time to save Raynor to stop Trahixa early. 
Luckily my body, Ascalon, and your old Neo Durandal came too with drag, since I put them in the boosted gear. Do everything you did in the past till the three factions get together and have peace. You have to become a devil again, and I want to tell you that I am sorry that you have to go through that pain again. Issei said. Zenobia just hugged him tightly for a little bit. Issei, caught off guard just patted her head. I am glad to have my future memories. Can I have my Neo Durandal back? Zenobia asked. No I am keeping it so you can get your own. Issei said childishly sticking out his tongue out at her. Well Issei who else remembers? Zenobia asked. Asia remembers everything. I hinted it to Arena. The others in the peerage excluding Kiba know I am from the future. Then there is Raynor, and I suspect Azazel knows, but I have to go to him now to set up the three factions meeting, so see you. Issei said walking away to the nearby hotel. Way to say one last thing. Here. Zenobia said planting on Issei's dot got that out of the way now go Issei. Zenobia said to the stunned Issei. Zenobia giggled lightly. Thanks but Asia still had my first Zenobia. Issei said leaving her behind. Well shoot that didn't work well, I better become a devil. Zenobia said picking up the shattered pieces of Excalibur. Back with Issei. Issei just picked up Raynor and didn't tell them where they were heading. They went to an apartment complex. Issei knocked on the door. Come in. A voice said. Issei opened the door to see a surprisingly full-dressed Azazel. He first looked at Issei, but the second he looked at Raynor he rushed up to her and swung her around. Raynor it is you. I can't believe you are alive. What do you mean? Raynor asked. I got a report saying you were killed. Azazel said. And she almost was. I decided to spare her this time. Issei said. What do you mean? Azazel asked taking a drink of his liquor. I don't see the harm in telling you. I come from the future. Trust me it wasn't pretty. Trahiksa was released Issei said, making Azazel spray in Issei's face. Can we come in so I can wash my face? Issei asked Azazel let them in, and Issei washed his face, then sat on the couch next to Raynor. How do you know that name? Azazel asked. I come from the future. I came back for a reason. A destroyed world was our future. Issei said. Wait, you said was? Azazel asked. I changed the future a bit saving Raynor. In my timeline she was killed for killing me and an innocent nun. I hid Raynor this week because I knew Kakabiel's movements. I need you to call Serzichas and Michael to apologize for Kakabiel's actions. That is just a front to call for peace. As you once said to me, wouldn't peace be nice, I don't have to worry about every single thing and can get back to my research. And then you went on about boobs and the fact that nipples are similar to doorbells. Which you were right about. Issei said. Azazel simply blushed up at his antics being said in front of his daughter. That does sound like something I would say and a new devil knowing the name Trahiksa is very unbelievable. At the summit I want more details. Alright. Azazel asked. Yes Azazel. Issei then took Raynor to his house where she slept in Asia's room, while Asia and Rhea slept with Issei. The weekend flew by for Issei. He got to see Rhea's, Akeno, and Raynor all in selfie swimsuits. They also cleaned the pool, and Issei almost was raped by Zenobia again. Zenobia joined them on Friday and told them how she had been kicked out for knowing the truth. She played her part just like Issei asked her to, and he was starting to regret it because she was more forward now than before. Then came Parents' Day. Basically filler episode 6 to 7 happened here with Raynor here. I just let them fly by for the next point. The bee continued, just kidding. Parents' Day is here and Rhea's brother stayed the night again. Serzichas didn't mind that Raynor was there even though she was a fallen. Issei was walking to school when he noticed Vali was at the gate. Hello White Dragon Emperor. I assume you know me, but I am Issei Hiroto, the current Sekure. It's nice to meet you Vali Lucifer. Issei said making his name a whisper. Vali didn't expect Issei to know his family line. Issei noticed his shock. I heard that your goal is to beat your grandfather is it not? That is why you seek strength. Issei asked. Vali flinched again. How do you know that? Vali said. It is normal to look into your enemy's foes to seek assistance, and you happen to be one of them. Go someone will make you an offer to help you with your boring world, so you can get stronger so go. Issei said telling Vali to take office's offer to join the cow's brigade. Bring this group of people with you, tell Kuroka she can tell her sister the truth. Issei said handing him a list of everyone on the Vali team. Issei turned around to see his friends behind him. Yo everyone. See you later. Issei said walking off to class without looking back. Is it just me or is Issei still not showing off his true strength? Riaz asked everyone. It seems like he can be himself not his past self so to speak. It is like when he went into that church all perverted and he came out a calmer man. Akeno said. I agree with Akeno. Issei was probably tense from trying to keep major events to happen the same way. Like instead of just attacking Kakabiel from out front he waited till Kakabiel said something major which was about his death. Asia said. Wait Issei changed because he is from the future. 
He didn't tell me. Kiba said. Kiba trust me when I say that you don't want to know yet. Asia said remembering that she was the one who was watching them that day in the nurse's office. If you say so Asia. Kiba said confused. Issei walked into class with two fists coming right at him from Masuda and Motohama. Issei you bastard. They said. Issei took the hit and acted like it hurt. We know what you did punk Matsuda said angrily. Like how you got that Zenobia chick into your club. Motohama followed up. She is the friend of my childhood friend. She asked me to look after Zenobia and so I did. Issei said knowing what Zenobia was going to do. Issei I want to apologize for what I said to you. Zenobia started. It's fine. We can do it some other time you just have to wait. Issei said throwing Zenobia for a loop. Really? Zenobia said excitedly. Yes. I promise to help you achieve your goal. Issei said. Oh what's her goal? Mitsuda asked. To learn how to be a good mother via cooking. Zenobia sucks at cooking so I help her. Right. Issei said making it clear to her that she will follow his story. Yes. Zenobia said fearing what would happen if she made it to a joke. Issei waked off to meet with the presidents and their vice presidents. Oh Issei it is nice to see you. Ria said. Yo ladies. What's up? Issei asked. I hear that you met the white dragon. Sona asked. Yes I told him that we had a common goal so you don't have to worry about me destroying the school. Especially considering your sister is probably here so you have enough as it is. Issei said triggering a flag inside of Sona. I never mentioned my sister to anyone. How do you know? Sona asked coldly thinking Issei is a fake. Well I come from the future if that helps. I figured I should warn you to go to the gym before she starts a photo shoot there in her magic girl cosplay outfit. The one she says is her work uniform. Issei said showing how much he knows about the future. Sona got wide-eyed and ran in the direction of the gym, and her queen followed behind her. She returned with her sister in tow. Issei I want an explanation now on how you knew that. Sona demanded. How about I save it for the upcoming summit? After all I did ask Azazel to ask for it. Let's just say that the future was a bleak one. Issei said before walking off. On your desk there is a block of clay. Your assignment is to create something that inspires you. It can be anything you want as long as it is original. We use the same words, but it's your personal thought. The teacher said, we are so proud of you Asia. Issei's mom said. Look at the camera. Issei's dad said. Asia just waved back smiling brightly. Issei looks at the block and considers what to make. He could make another Ria's. Or he could make an Akeno statue. Then an idea popped into Issei's head. He used some of his aura and without anyone paying attention to him as he made more clay to make something bigger. Oh wow Issei how did you make this? The teacher asked Issei. Issei opened his eyes to see his sculpture has become. It was a sculpture that had the current members of the occult research club made very accurately. Only one problem. Kiba is a girl in the sculpture. Luckily no one noticed or said anything about it. They started selling it off, and Issei just took it to give to Ria's. Issei meet up with Ria's in the hallway. Hey Ria's I got something for you. Issei said giving the statue to her. Wow it is nicely made. Is this what Kiba would look like as a girl Issei? Ria's asked teasing her servant. Issei decided it was time. Ria's take this ring I made you and then hold my hands. Issei said handing her a ring with a crimson jewel with the label Ria's. Okay then. Ria said just doing what Issei said. Warning this will hurt a bit. Soul fusion. Issei said as a glow engulfed the two of them. Ria's opened her eyes. Issei. She said jumping Issei knocking Issei on the ground. I am glad you remember. I don't think I could deal with another jealous Ria's again. Issei said to Ria's who was giggling in his chest. Issei what happened? Last thing I remember was being in vampire territory and we were middle of fighting Grendel. Ria's asked. Ria's calm down. After that fight I went back in time and changed it. I gave your past self your memories we shared and that's what happened. Issei said. Wow I wondered why things seemed different. What did you change? I will tell you are the summit okay. I should go see Akeno so I can get Ascalon. Issei said walking off. I won't let anyone die again. Issei said under his breath. Hey Drag. When do you think he will wake up? I mean it's been a while. Issei asked. Albion should be waking up soon I hope. He didn't wake up since Bali transferred him to us. Drake said back. Flashback. Bali was bleeding out his clothes were all torn up. Issei ran to his rival. Bali. Hang in there. Issei said trying to close his wounds. Issei I can't make it for much longer, but here I want to give you something. Bali said getting Issei to stop trying to heal him, crying because he was losing his friend. Sacred transfer. Vali said puking some blood and holding Issei's arm as he sent Albion to Issei. But buy and make the future a good one. Vali said with a smile on his face as he closed his eyes. Why? Issei said crying as he lost his last friend. Issei, let's go. We will see him again. Let's go train. Drag said through the boosted gear. Yes Drag let's do it. 
Issei said smiling even though the tears were still coming. Flashback end, I wish he would. Drake said being cut off by someone. Where am I? Said a familiar voice belonging to a certain white dragon. Albion. It's about time you woke up it's been like 8 months since Bali transferred you to me. Issei said to his two partners. Well seeing as you are my new user Issei, I will teach you how to use my power, and maybe by the time the three great factions get together. Albion said. That sounds great, but if you don't mind, I have a cosplay site to see. Issei said out loud heading straight for the gym. Issei walked into the gym to see a girl with dark hair and twin tails, while wearing a pink magical girl costume. To be specific it is a magical girl milky spiral alterative 7 cosplay, but I don't have anyone to show off to, so I will keep it to myself. Issei thought to himself. Issei approached the stage. Lady Seraphil your sister is looking for you. Issei said walking up to the stage to stand next to the Leviathan. She stopped poising for the cameras, and everyone started to yell at Issei. Everyone started to leave Issei was leading Sarah to the student council office. So who are you? Sarah asked. I am sorry Lady Seraphil. I was so immense into your beauty and getting you to your sister that I forgot to introduce myself to you. I am Issei Haidu, this generation's Red Dragon Emperor. I am Ria's Grimmery's pawn, and I am a strong force on my own. Issei said bowing as he introduced himself to a blushing Seraphil. They arrived to the student council office. Issei knocked on the door. Sona came out with an annoyed face. What do you want? She said not noticing her sister. Seraphil jumped from behind Issei and hugged Sona too tightly. Oh Sona. I've missed you. What's the matter? You look sad. Aren't you happy to see me? You should run into my arms and I'll say that I missed you too. Then I give you a big and you meet back. Then that leads to girl on girl action, and wouldn't that be hot? Seraphil said getting into Sona's face. Now Lady Seraphil you should back off your sister for a second. Issei said. Reluctantly Seraphil let go of Sona. Thanks Issei. Sona said. No problem Sona now if you don't mind I have to return to Ria's. Issei said leaving the sisters alone. So Sona what do you think about Issei over there? Seraphil asked her sister catching Sona off again. I don't know yet what about you sis? Sona asked. I think I found a strong enough guy to have our three way with. Seraphil said making Sona blush. With Issei. Issei meet up with Ria's who was with her brother and dad with Issei's parents. It's nice to meet the ones who are taking care of my daughter. Raiden said. Why don't we go back to the house and sit? Issei's dad said. That sounds like a great idea. Raiden said. Great. Then it settled. Should we stop by the store to buy some whiskey? Issei's dad said leaving the kids behind. He doesn't know who he's talking to. Issei said. They went home and were treated to in sight. All three males were drinking away. Cheers to our friendship. Issei's dad said and all three of them drank another round. They started to watch the videos again trying to embarrass the kids, except it didn't work because they all had experienced it before, due to their future souls are fused with their current ones. Ria's, Issei and Asia all went up to his room to get ready for bed. Hey sis, since you have seemed to control your peerage better, I think it's time to unleash your bishop. Serzich has said. If you the Mayu are suggesting that I release him, I will do so. Ria said to her brother. Serzich has smiled as he left with his drunk father for the night to return home. Later on Issei fell asleep with Asia sleeping on his left side while Ria's was on his right. It was a tight fit for them because they used to do this after they got the house upgraded. While the girls were asleep Issei was actually training inside his head with Albion. Issei went to the area where he could meet with the two dragons. I see you have grown stronger since I saw you with Vali. Albion said after training Issei how to absorb power. Albion's sacred gear in Issei came in the form of a gauntlet on his other arm. That made sense because the Red Dragon Emperor is sent to have endless power container. Meaning that he could divide without having to let any of the power out. Well I spent 6 months training, plus the point that was before I trained. I am stronger than my old form. Issei said explaining to Albion his strength, while Drag got some well deserved break. It looks like Drag is very tired from this all. Albion said. He had to be up all the time to help me deal with all of the bad memories and keep them at bay. He really helped me out this time. So this time I will not be the Oppai Dragon. Since you are awake I was thinking of getting known as the Crimson White Heavenly King. Since I came use both Heavenly Dragons it seemed like an idea I came up with. Issei said looking at the tall white dragon. Um it sounds nice, although being just a. Issei and the peerage with Raynor was in front of a door that was magically sealed. Alright it is time to let Gasper out. Rhea said wearing her ring that once held her soul. Rhea's took off the seal. Inside came a scream. No. I don't understand what is going on. The casket said. Rias walked into the room and walked to the casket. The seal is broken. You can come with us now. Okay. Rias asked lifting the coffin. No I don't ever want to leave here. Said the one in the coffin. It was a blonde girl with short hair wearing a cow school girl uniform. 
I won't fall for that same trick this time. Issei thought. That is a boy and you know it. Issei I am surprised you haven't jumped at him yet Issei. Kiba said not knowing that Issei knew of Gasper before now. Well I know that he is a boy judging from his name Gasper. Issei said making a cool guy pose. This made everyone laugh at him even Gasper. Hey Gasper. Let's go train your sacred gear. Trust me it will be needed. Issei said sterning his voice to a more serious one. Follow me if you want to train. Issei said leaving the room. Well I didn't expect Issei to do that. Ria said. His face was defiantly reminded me of when he thought about his past. Rainer said. As much as I hate to agree with you, I do agree with you. Akeno said. They all agreed too. They noticed something though. Gasper had actually left his room. When did he leave? Rainer said completely off guard. His sacred gear slows down time. He hasn't had control over it completely yet. Rhea said. That makes sense on how he left. But how could he know to trust to say? Rainer asked. It was his dragon aura. Kaneko said getting everyone to look on her. It was giving off a feeling of trustworthiness. Fiba my brother wants to see you. Akeno is my queen will you come with? Rias asked. Yes madam president. Akeno said. The rest of us will try to give Issei a hand if we can find him. Asia said. But Issei. So you want to learn how to use your sacred greer? Issei asked on the roof of the old school house. You know something don't you? Gasper said. Your power has the potential to save this whole word. Issei said. If you let things sit without training it will not help you trust me. I know from my own experiences. Issei said. Bodies everywhere. Wings of each race laying on the ground. Blood everywhere. The white Albin divided the stress in Issei's mind. Thanks Albion. Issei thought to his awake partner. No problem. Albion said. Sorry about that. I just remembered something. You're friends with a girl named Valerie, a vampire right? Issei said making Gasper gasp. What do you mean? Gasper said recovering from his shock. She has a sacred gear that someone will try to extract. You can stop them. Issei said flatly. Now let's go head to the volleyball court. Issei said. Why there? Gasper asked. Because you are going to be working on stopping the balls midair. Issei said making his dragon wings come out. Come on. Let's go. Coming. Gasper said. One intense training session later. Very good Gasper you are able to stop the volleyball at a normal speed of a human. Which is really good since how you aren't used to using it yet. We will take a break for today. Issei said as Gasper laid down on the ground. Thanks Issei. Gasper said. Issei sensed someone nearby. You can come out now. Issei said. Out of the corner of his eye two men came out of the bushes. I really have to say you really know how to train his sacred gear Issei. The man with the black hair with blonde bangs. I know a faster way would be for him to have some of my blood, but since this little guy doesn't like it, I am respecting his choice. Volley have you gotten your group together? Issei asked. Yes they will be at the meeting tomorrow. Volley said surprising Azazel. But they will need to be there for what I have set up. Issei said getting Azazel to look at him now. Alright, let's go Azazel. It seems like the one you wanted to see isn't here, so let's go eat to be ready for tomorrow. Volley said turning and leaving with Azazel. I better go too. Akeno wanted me to go up to her shrine. Issei said walking away from Gasper who was still in awe at Issei's strength. At the shrine. The Okeno. Issei said halfway up the stairs. Akeno appeared from the side of the path. Hello Issei. Sorry about the sudden invite, but you probably know what is going on right now. Akeno said. You got me. That is one of the things I love about you being able to see right past me. Issei said making Akeno blush. They walked into the shrine. This place was secured by Rias once the last master died. Akeno said. So this is the Red Dragon Emperor. A voice said as a golden glow appeared and a man with 12 golden wing appeared. Yes I am Michio Sama. Issei said smiling back at the man. Hello Issei Haidu. I am indeed Michael, Chief of the Angels. Michael said. They entered the shrine. I have a gift for you. Michael said summoning a silver sword decorated with purple jewels. This is Ascalon the Dragon Slayer. Many dragons have fallen to the sword. He handed the sword to Issei when he remembered that Draid was asleep and if he used Albion that would ruin the surprise. I will store this in my sacred gear later. Draig is sleeping right now. Issei said surprising Michael, but he didn't let it show. Alright. I will be leaving now. Michael said turning around. Wait Michael the first have to ask for a favor after the meeting. Issei asked. Sure, I must go now. Michael said making a golden glow as he teleported away. Issei sat down at the nearby table. Akeno came back with tea. So you came here to work on the sword? Issei asked. Yes. We had to make Ascalon so it would accept you. Akeno said handing Issei some tea. Thank you, I do have to ask how you felt about your dad, Barakiel. Issei said not sure how she felt about it since she had the ring to talk to her mother with her. 
But let's say normally I would I have told you about my hater to my father. Akeno started. However since I started taking to my mom again I begun to understand why he wasn't there. It looks like you have let your heart begin to heal again. Issei said unknowingly letting a golden glow of kindness around him. Akeno noticed this but said nothing about it. She got up behind Issei and hugged him from behind. Issei just enjoyed the feeling. Hey Issei I don't mind being third. Akeno whispered into his ear. Akeno you aren't third. Issei said. I love you all equally. I would do everything to protect you. Even doing the impossible by rewriting time. I can do it because I have you girls with me. So there aren't places for you girls. Akeno relaxed her hold on him. Well Akeno I have to go now. Issei said sensing Rhea's coming. Oh we just got started but alright I guess. Akeno said letting go of Issei. Thanks Akeno. Issei said picking up Ascalon and headed down the stairs. Well I didn't expect you to be walking down. Rhea said bumping into Issei on his way down. Well Akeno was easier this time because I had help. Issei said still holding Ascalon. Why haven't you put it in the boosted gear Issei? Rhea's asked noticing the sword. Greg is asleep from going back in time. He has been taking care of me since we traveled back so I let him rest for a while. Issei said. By the way how are you using Neo Durandal? Rhea's asked as they walked down the stairs. Well the sword came to my aid when I was training and it decided to have me being its wielder and I took it with me as I came back through time. Issei explained. Don't worry. I will bring Akeno with me tonight to sleep with us. Get plenty of rest. The meeting is tomorrow. Rhea said. Sure thing. I will be waiting. Rainer is living with Azazel right now and they are coming together at the meeting. Issei said reminding Rhea's of their new team member. Alright Issei, see you later. Rhea said heading to her next meeting as Issei left to go home. Little did she know he was going to go get one of his girls back. The next day. Issei told off Mitsuda and Madahama. They were in the classroom when Issei finally snapped. You two are not my friends. Issei yelled at them. Everyone looked as one of the perverted trio was shouting about something not perverted. Won't you allow Issei? Mitsuda said. No. I'm sick of how you two treat me. Ever since this year started when you two wanted to go peep, you would drag me along just to ditch me, so you wouldn't have to be hurt. Issei said. Issei decided to leave the room to relieve some of his stress. He went to the roof. Hey Albion do you think we can save the world this time? Issei thought to the awakened dragon partner. Albion thought for a second. Yes, Issei. I have faith in you. You have the support of the two heavenly dragons, Office the Arabarus dragon, and Great Red. If Trahixa is a girl hopefully if you offer to mate with you. Albion half jokingly. Hey that sounds like a good idea if she is up for it. I won't trust her immediately if that somehow does happen. Issei joked back. This got the two of them to laugh. Greg will be awake by the time of the fight. Albion said. Well I think I will use you as a test. Of course we will go right into Balance Breaker and we reveal that. Issei said back. Sure thing Issei. Albion said as Issei laid his hands behind his head as he went to sleep. The three faction leaders were all siding down in one of the classrooms. Rias brought Gasper with her since she knew that he would be used to incus the group here. She let it slip that he would be in the old club room since that was what was supposed to happen. So we are here to discuss the actions of Kakabiel. Serzich has said. Actually no we aren't. Issei said surprising everyone except Azazel for Issei's boldness to outspeak against Amao. We are gathered here because I ask Azazel to have you all come so we can have peace. Vali can you summon the group I asked you to gather? Issei asked. Vali grunted and made a white summoning circle behind him, and Issei did the same in red. Out of the white circle came Karaka, Lafrey, Biku, and Arthur Pentagon. This group made everyone tense but not as tense as the people who came for Issei's circle. Out of his circle came Ravel Finex, Roswiss and the All-Father himself Odin. Both of the Gordons were wearing rings that were engraved with their name on them. Roswiss jumped on Issei. Oh Issei I missed you so much. From now on we shall live together. Ooh I can't wait. She said making the girls who knew who she was raise an eyebrow. Issei simply shrugged at them as if saying he will explain it later. Thank you again Issei for inviting me. Shall we pass out the gifts? Odin asked. Issei nodded and started handing out rings to every person who didn't have one and gave one to Akeno since she wasn't wearing her mom because she didn't want anyone else to know yet and that she didn't have hers yet. Well right now that the rings are all passed out I wish for us all to gather our hands together. Issei said. Everyone knew what Issei was doing was dangerous but trusted him anyways. Once everyone was connected Issei let out all of his seals unleashing 16 wings, two pairs of devil, dragon, angel and fallen wings. Soul fusion and a bright light came around the room. Everyone in the room looked around at their surroundings. Issei what happened? Serzich has said as a boom came from the wall. What is the hell is that devil here? The intruder said. Issei smiled. Well, let us go outside Leviathan. 
Issei shouted throwing himself at her sending the two of them out the wall. The girls all were concerned for Issei. Ria's turned to Roswas. So what happened to her personality? Ria's asked Aden. Well when Issei came by and restored our older souls, she might have encountered a slight personality change. Aden said scratching his head. I am taking a guess that with her older soul and younger one combined, it proved to her that he loved her, and she became trashed with love for him. Aden said giving a light giggle. Meanwhile outside with Issei and Kateria. So you wish to challenge me alone? You dare challenge a descendant of Amo. Kateria said getting angrily. I wanted to test something that you will be the test subject for. Go balance break. Issei said without summoning his sacred gear shocking everyone when they heard it. Vanishing dragon balance breaker Issei donned the white and blue orbed armor with white wings, all while putting his other wings away. What you are supposed to be the red dragon emperor what is this trickery? Kateria screamed thinking what everyone else was thinking. Issei chuckled. That's right. So don't mind if I defeat you. Issei said sending a punch right to her chest. Divide came from the armor. Kateria felt her power go away. Issei was surprised himself. Really? This is half of your power. Haha you really are weak. Issei laughed as he quickly punched her a few more times making her collapse. A laughter was heard into the background, one that scared everyone. It was the son of Lucifer. I knew Leviathan would fail, but to thank that the vanishing dragon beater was unexpected. Razim said. Albion wake drag it is a code white red. We have to test it, Issei said. Partner that idea is insane. Albion said. Just do it. We are the only ones who can do it. I am still holder of the infinite and the dream. I will do this. Issei said. I'm up partner. Let's do the impossible again. Drake said confidently. Of all of the dragons I am the most powerful one. Issei said starting his chant. The lover of many and the love of few. I am the infinite and the dream. I love the infinite and make the dream come true. I become the dragon on most high with both heavenlies. I will dominate and become supreme over those below me. I will crush those in my wake. Infinite dream heavenly dragon overdrive. Infinite dream heavenly dragon overdrove. Dragon Albion said. Issei transformed into a pink dragon likely caused by the combination of red and white. There was a lot of power from Issei. Issei grew out his power. Haha boy good luck your sacred gear can do nothing against my sacred gear canceller. Raysom said. Issei kept calm. Yes but that only applies to beings weaker to you. Issei said grinning while creating a bar preventing the son of Lucifer to run. Lucifer starts panicing. Why can't I teleport away? I can't die here. He shouted. Issei sent a white beam as Lucifer was trying to escape. Divide boost 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 Issei took the power that Raysom had and boosted it up more and more. A cannon appeared from Issei's chest. Ready boys? Issei asked. Ready partner Drag and Albion said together. Long in a smasher. Issei said making the cannon fired completely obliterating everything to the ground for a mile. Luckily only the old schoolhouse was destroyed and Issei's team was far away. Once the light died down, Issei fell out of the sky unconscious and falling. There was nothing around him to stop his fall. All of the girls who loved Issei ran to him. Saji, Bali, Biku, Michael, Arthur, Serzichas, and Azazel stayed in the room still shocked that Issei had Albion and his new dragon form. Issei. Rhea said putting him on her lap. Um can someone explain to me how I am a guy again? Kiba asked getting the attention off all of the girls. Well Issei sand is from the future and brought our souls back. Asia explained to everyone came over. Why is there a blank in my memory though? Michael asked. I remember Trahiksa being unleashed and only dragon surviving. But I can't remember anything after that. Vali said. I can explain that. Albion appeared on Issei's back. You don't remember Issei getting me as because you gave him me as you were dying Albion said. Drag appeared on Issei's arm. As me and Issei were near River Styx. Issei came up with the idea of picking up things where you all left off with your knowledge. While we were in God's room deciding a time to restore our save progress and insert our future cheat so to speak, and we chose to save the fallen over there. Drake said making everyone notice that Raynor was alive something that was different from the time they were from. Can you guys stop staring at me? Raynor asked. Wait why did Issei do all of this? Michael asked. You will have to wait for Issei to wake up Drake said. Everyone wondered what the new future had when a bright light came into the area. Mate you forgot to close the portal. The figure said. Thanks for watching this video. If you really enjoy this video. Like subscribe and comment down below and turn on that bell notification. Don't forget to support and follow the JUNEJULY305 for writing that awesome fanfic and also make sure to comment on this story link in the description. See you in the next video. Goodbye.